Welcome back to Bargaining and War. Today we're looking at a simple question in this lecture. Does uncertainty cause war? Basic question. Well, if you consult what the crisis bargaining literature and the conflict literature broadly say on the subject, there's a conventional wisdom out there that the answer is yes. Uncertainty causes war. And you can see why one might want to draw that sort of conclusion. Think about how we started this course. We began by noting that war is costly. And due to the inefficiency of conflict, states have an incentive to negotiate a resolution instead. Indeed, when there are no commitment problems, there's no shifting power or anything like that, and there's complete information, that is our expectation. Our expectation is that the states should be negotiating a solution. We should be getting peace. Well, in the last few lectures, we've relaxed the assumption that the states have complete information. We've allowed uncertainty and incomplete information. And what we've seen there is that we can, under certain circumstances, get war to occur as a consequence of that. So if we take a very black and white perspective on the situation, we see with no uncertainty, peace, and with uncertainty, sometimes we get war. So therefore, it is tempting to conclude that uncertainty causes war. Unfortunately, the relationship is actually much murkier. We can't really draw that sort of conclusion. And this lecture is geared toward understanding why that's the case. And the short answer is that if we really want to understand whether uncertainty causes war, we need to formalize a true comparative static and then take that comparative static and see whether the probability of war goes up or down. And when we do that here, we're going to see that, in fact, the standard idea that uncertainty causes war falls apart. There are many reasons why this argument can fall apart. We're only going to be focusing on just this one for today. And we're going to be using the binary on source of uncertainty that we've been looking at previously. So in this game, we solved this before, where A does not know B's cost for war. It can either be high or low. What we saw is that the equilibrium of that game is a function of the probability Q, that is A's belief that B has high costs. We saw that there is this critical cut point Q star, which is equal to CA plus CB over CA plus CB prime, where if A's belief that B has high costs is above Q star, then it makes a risky demand that the high cost type will accept, but the low cost type will reject. And if Q is less than Q star, then A makes the safe demand which both types accept. So we think about the probability of war in each of these cases. Here, with the safe demand, the probability of war is equal to zero because both types are accepting the demand. In contrast, with the risky demand, when Q is greater than Q star, we do observe a positive probability of war. If you think about what the probability of war is, well, the high cost type is accepting. The low cost type is rejecting. We know that the high cost type probability What's the likelihood that it exists? It's Q. So the low cost type's probability of existing is one minus Q. So our expected probability of war then is one minus Q. So now what we need to do is take this information. This is the equilibrium. I've done nothing more than summarize what is important from previous lectures for the purposes of today's lecture. We haven't yet actually defined our comparative static and then taken that comparative static and used this information to understand how changing uncertainty can change the probability of war. In fact, there's going to be a couple of different cases that we're going to be looking at. The argument is still going to result in us concluding that we can't really see a clear relationship between uncertainty and war, but whether Q falls above or below one half is going to determine the exact parts of how this relationship unfolds. So we're going to do two different graphs to explain how the argument falls apart. And both of the graphs are going to have on our x-axis Q, and as our y-axis, the probability of war. And in the first case, we'll have Q be less than one half, Q star being less than one half. So here we have the risky demand being made. And here we have the safe demand being made. And let's use this information up here to draw out what this plot looks like. Well, if Q is less than Q star, then the probability of war is zero. So I'm just going to darken this in to reflect the fact that the probability of war is zero there. 
And then at Q star, we flip from making the safe demand to making the risky demand. And the risky demand has a probability of war of one minus Q. So everything to the right of Q star has a probability of war of one minus Q, which looks roughly like that. So this is one minus Q and this is zero. Great. Okay, so we have defined what the probability of war looks like in that figure. And now that we've done that, we can think about what uncertainty is in this context and take the true comparative static. Well, what I'm going to be arguing to you right now is that uncertainty minimizes at Q equal to zero over here, and as well as minimizing at Q equal to one. Whereas it maximizes at Q equal to 0.5. Just draw a dotted line there for 0.5. So here we think of this as max uncertainty, whereas down here and down here, we have minimum uncertainty. Now, why is that? Well, think about what the case where Q equal to one is. What does that represent? That represents the case where A knows for sure that B has high costs. There's a 100% probability that B has high costs. There's a 0% probability that B has low costs. That is essentially saying A knows exactly what B's costs are. It's the high cost amount. It's CB prime. So that's a case with complete information. Uncertainty then minimizes in that case because there's complete information. There's no uncertainty. Likewise, Think about what the situation where Q equals zero, what does that represent? Well, that's a situation where A knows for sure that B has low costs. There's a 0% probability that A has, rather B has high costs, and there's a 100% probability that B has low costs. Again, it's a situation with complete information. Well, if we think about zero and one minimizing uncertainty, then 0.5 should maximize uncertainty. As a technical side note here, the type uh, distribution here is also known as a Bernoulli distribution. And if you're familiar with Bernoulli distributions, the variance of a Bernoulli distribution maximizes at 0.5. So there's also another technical reason why we should think of 0.5 as maximizing uncertainty. But that's superfluous information. You don't need to know anything about Bernoulli distributions to appreciate what's going on here. But let's think about what's happening with the probability Q as representing uncertainty and how that's altering the probability of war. So if it's the case that as we increase uncertainty, we increase the probability of war, that would be consistent with the conventional wisdom. But if we look at this graph, we don't actually get that. So think about what happens as we go away from zero as our probability Q. Well, as we're doing that, the probability of war is staying flat at zero. So we're seeing no change. Now, as we increase uncertainty up until Q star, once we pass Q star, well, now the probability of war jumps up. So that is consistent with the idea that increasing uncertainty increases war. The problem, though, is that think about what happens when you go from Q star toward 0.5. So here we're still increasing uncertainty, but the probability of war is going down, which is not what's supposed to be the case if uncertainty is causing war. Now, it is true that once you pass the one-half marker, we're now decreasing uncertainty, and we're decreasing the probability of war. So that part is still consistent with the conventional wisdom. But everything right here is not conventional wisdom. This is saying that you increase uncertainty, and you actually decrease the probability of war. There's a similar sort of story if we have Q star greater than one-half. So let's draw the same thing again. But now we'll have Q star over here as greater than 1 half. So this is still 1 half right here. And what do we have? This is Q as our x-axis. This is probability of war on our y-axis. And again, we're thinking about this 0.5 as maximizing the uncertainty and 0 and 1 as minimizing the uncertainty. Well, the probability of war is still being drawn from here. We still have that information to use to be able to draw the probability of war. The probability of war going from zero toward Q star is zero. 
I'm just going to fill that in nice and dark. And once we cross over a Q star, then the probability of war is 1 minus Q. So that's going to look something like this. Okay, so now let's take that comparative static and think about how increasing uncertainty either increases or decreases the probability of war. Well, if we go from 0 to 0.5, there's no relationship. So we're increasing uncertainty here, but the probability of war is staying static at 0. So there's really nothing to say about that there. That's fine. It doesn't violate necessarily the general idea, but it's not confirming it either. If we go past 0.5, this is where we've maximized uncertainty. Well, now we're decreasing uncertainty from there, and it's still not changing the probability of war. It's still flat at zero. But if we decrease uncertainty further past Q star, now suddenly the probability of war is jumping up. And that is not consistent with the notion that uncertainty causes war or lack of uncertainty causes peace. Here we are decreasing the uncertainty and we are increasing the probability of war. Now, once again, once you get past Q star, as you increase Q further, you are decreasing the probability of war from there. But this range right here, anything from here, once we get past that amount and we shift over into the post Q star region, where Q is greater than Q star, we're not seeing that relationship. We're seeing the opposite. We're seeing more war than what we would have had we maximized uncertainty at 0.5. So to conclude here, what is the relationship between uncertainty and war? Well, we can say rather definitively that if we go from a situation where there is no shifting power, no commitment problem, so let's just wash our hands clean of any commitment problem whatsoever. We're getting rid of those entirely. No commitment problem. If we have complete information, then we get peace. If we have incomplete information, then we can get war. So in that extreme case, where there is no uncertainty, we know that we get peace. Okay, that's comforting. But when we have uncertainty, whether we have lots of uncertainty or some uncertainty or a little bit of uncertainty, the probability of war is not clear. And it's going to depend case by case for where you are on one of these particular graphs, whether you're here or here or here, or in the case where Q star is greater than 0.5, here or here or here. It's not clear. That's it for this lecture. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time. Take care.